And welcome to um, let me see here. Would you guys mind muting for a couple of seconds um, before we begin? Because we're getting an echo. Thank you. So welcome to our August series on adaptive and authoring software. It's part of our support for more creation within our textbook transformation grants program. Um, I have with us today um, Ashley and um, I'm sorry, would you mind pronouncing your name? Yeah, it's, it's Evelyn. Evelyn, okay. Yeah. And yeah, I'm very glad to have them here from Realize It today. Um, it's a really interesting tool that I think could radically transform existing OER. Uh, so I will turn it over to them. Um, Ashley and Emily, who is going to be uh, presenting at first? Uh, that will be me. This is Ashley. I'm going to get us started. I am changing the presenter role to you. Okay, fantastic. And you can switch the slides by uh, moving the arrows that are right at the top bar. Top bar, do I see those? Yeah, there's left and then there's zero one. In, in one. Do I not see that? Sorry. Okay, so if you see the slide that, uh, right above that, there is yes. a drop down menu that says zero one and then it has all the slides. Now, for some reason, I am just not seeing that. Why? I just, mine is blank at the top. Am I missing something? Okay, so it should be in between the tab and the slides. The tab and the slides, yes. I do not see that unless this is, there we go. There's like, it's barely there, but I see it. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, it's, no, it's no problem. It's probably my computer, so no worries. But um, I know uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just go ahead and dive right in if that's okay. Uh, yes. Okay, fantastic. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, appreciate it. Um, again, my name is Ashley O'Connor, and I'm part of our institutional partnership team. Um, and I've also got, uh, obviously, have Evelyn here, who you just heard. Um, Evelyn, I'll go ahead and let you just introduce yourself and tell them a little bit about what your team does. Sure. Um, so I'm Evelyn McKillowy. I'm the program development development manager. At Realize it. And um, so I work with a team of content analysts. And um, we're actually based in our Dublin office. And um, with our, our um, research and development team. Um, and we get very engaged with institutions and in particular faculty and um, subject matter experts and institutional designers and work closely with them um, to build um, their courseware in Realize it. Um, another um, exercise that our team has taken on in the in our project in the recent past was to um, bring into our system a number of the OpenStax textbooks, and we'll actually be looking at one of those today. Um, and um, having brought those into the system, we've worked on um, adapting them to make them more suitable for delivery in an adaptive learning environment. Um, so I'll be able to talk to you about that, but hopefully that gives you a bit of overview on what our team engages in. Great, thank you. Um, and it's my understanding, you know, based on what I've in our conversation, our earlier conversations, that that's really um, going to be our focus today in terms of what you guys want. Um, but we thought it was really important to at least give you a high level of overview of, you know, who is Realize It, um, and kind of a high level again overview of what the system looks like from a learner and instructor experience. So we're going to just take a few minutes early on here to kind of orient you to Realize It. You know, who are we? Um, what are is our system, what is our platform, and, and just to very briefly show you the learner and instructor experience so that you get a better understanding when Evelyn actually starts talking about the course design, content, and authoring, you know, what that might look like um, from your perspective as a faculty member and then what your students might see. So I'm just going to take a few minutes here to just kind of give you a sense again, you know, who is Realize It? Um, I know that there are several different solutions out there and, and sometimes people can get them confused or wonder, you know, what the difference is. So, you know, kind of when we look at our mission in terms of what we do and how we got started um, since we were formed in 2007, you know, our goal was and, and still remains um, to help each student realize his or her full learning potential. Um, you know, adaptive or personalized learning 
campaign or competency based or really just the tools that are available um, that help institutions or help faculty, you know, make that happen. Um, our founders, you know, our educators um, and their passion was around helping that student again realize the full potential. And so therefore they designed a system um, to help facilitate that goal. Um, you know, fundamentally, uh, we're more and more about being a very effective learning and evidencing system um, that provides that individualized learning experience. Um, but at the same time, you know, we have a goal to help emulate, you know, kind of a good teacher and, and what they can or what they want to do in a classroom. Um, as part of that process, we want to deliver, you know, appropriate um, learning at the appropriate time, understanding all along that students have very different knowledge states. Um, and we want to deliver that appropriate material, allowing for those different learning styles of the students and understanding those styles. And again, trying to emulate a good teacher, what the teacher wants to do in the classroom. Um, so that system becomes to understand each student, what are their strengths, what are their deficiencies. And then the system helps to remediate and adapt based on that knowledge and understanding. And we'll kind of show you how that works. Um, so it really tailors to the needs of your students in your classroom. Um, you know, finally, in, in terms of helping each student reach their full potential and be successful, we know that the system really needs to bring value to the faculty and the, the institution and not be constrained by, you know, subject or limited in content. So our platform is content and subject agnostic, um, so it really does not matter, you know, what the discipline is. Um, and then we also do seamlessly integrate uh, with your D2L system or any other major um, systems that you guys are using to make that process seamless um, and easy for faculty. We understand the workload for faculty is a lot, and, and the easier we can make that, the better. Um, in addition to really being, a, you know, kind of an adaptive personalized learning platform, we really are a learning solutions company, and I think that's important, um, especially in this use case, kind of based on, you know, what knowledge I do have of what you guys are looking to do. Um, you know, it's important to understand and realize that it's more than just a platform. We're very much a learning solutions company where we can partner with you to design and create the experience that you want. Um, you know, not a cookie cutter solution. So it's my understanding that um, some of you are, are kind of far along in understanding what you want to do, what your goals are, but that some folks on the call may be less, you know, developed in, in, in where they want to go early on in the discovery phases of, of what they might want to be doing. So. We really work with you kind of where you are in the process. You know, at the center is our platform, um, but we have our products and our content um, and our services, which everyone's really going to, you know, focus in on today, which is an important piece of, of what we do. Okay. All right. Um, I think it's also important to understand, you know, and this slide kind of addresses the various levels of adaptivity and personalization within the system. Um, again, kind of speaks to the customization that would be allowed, whether you want to do it, you know, at an assignment level, uh, module level, course level program, you know, almost enterprise wide, even system wide. We've been working with many of the different institutions in the Georgia system um, at, on different models, everything from competency based to adaptive and personalized. And we can really meet the needs at everything from the assignment to the system level. Um, and everything from seat based or competency um, based models. Right. And, you know, just to give you kind of a sense, you know, what is it that institutions are seeking when they come to us? Um, and, and this, you know, again, we probably have more faculty here than we do folks representing entire institutions. But, you know, I think there's still some of the same types of, of issues that, that we all have. You know, we get a lot of folks coming to us to help improve retention and persistence and completion, um, to, help, to help students achieve mastery, um, improve exam scores, improving grades and progression, um, different models, whether it be seat-based, flipped, you know, any type of model we can certainly work with. Um, you know, IEIR program quality are certainly some things. Faculty really want real-time evidence in what their students are doing and how they're performing in the class. Um, you know, and it really helps facilitate the learning environment and focus on the areas where students really need improvement. Um, and that's really one of the strengths of the system when it comes to faculty. Um, and you can see here, you know, again, we, we talked a little bit about being content and subject agnostic, all the different types of um, roles and contents, or I'm sorry, subjects and contents that we do have in different levels. Um, in terms of, whoops, let me go back here, sorry. There we go. 
um, in terms of, you know, kind of just talking through, you know, what is the real life learning model? Um, you know, kind of on one side, you've got the student and learning, and on the other side, you have really the teacher and content. And what we really do is we separate those two things. Um, you know, what is it that we want the student to learn? Um, and then what is the target knowledge? Um, you know, what are the different pieces of learning and assessment activities that you can then apply? Um, you know what, Jeff, just um, with the slide deck the way it is, um, these are actually supposed to, you're supposed to see different slide decks here, and it's only kind of going to the next one instead of expanding. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, WebEx doesn't do um, animations or transitions, so if there's more than one thing on one slide, it'll probably just put it all there. You know what, I wonder if I just, can you see if I just share it this way? You can see my screen, right? If you do screen sharing, uh, you would do share and then my desktop or share okay. app. Yes, let me just quickly do that because you're going to have to be able to see my, um, you're going to have to see my screen anyway in a few minutes because I am going to just go into the system. Okay. So if that's okay with you guys. That's, that's okay. Fine. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to take you right to where we were. And there we go. Perfect. So if I, if I click on just kind of that section there, you're going to see what sits right in the middle and and really, that's our adaptive learning engine. And within that engine, you know, what you're going to see here is, is kind of our, our four key elements to our system. Um, and, you know, if I take you into those, so the students will start out by going into the system and doing what we call determined knowledge, kind of a pre-assessment. And that really represents, does that student come in with prior knowledge? How can we help them or let them prove to us that they have knowledge so that they can be placed appropriately within the curriculum? Um, then we've got our learning pathways, which really describes, you know, how the students can actually navigate the different paths in the system. They may have different required pathways um, where they can work, you know, on what they want, when they want, um, that are unique to individual students. Um, we then have our profiling, which is really about the learner and how the system arranges for the student to learn using the most effective content. So let's say the student wants to learn item 36 from their curriculum. We want to give you the piece of content that's most relevant to you at that time. Um, and then finally, we've got our ability metrics or values, which is kind of understanding that student's current mastery. Um, it allows us to understand the student's ability against every item in the curriculum. You know, so for example, if you have a curriculum of 70 items, the ability metrics will tell us if on item 30, you're doing really well. However, on item 61, you know, you maybe haven't shown evidence that you know the material. And then on item 40, you're really struggling. So we need to kind of take a look at those prerequisites. Um, so again, it's kind of just all about understanding the student's current mastery level. Um, and that's just kind of a very quick, quick high level overview. There's obviously a lot that went into that and a lot more we can talk about. But um, in terms of kind of really focusing in on, you know, what is that target knowledge um, and how is it structured in our system? And, you know, Evelyn's going to go into a lot more detail with some of these things, but just to give you a quick sense. So right here, you've got our target knowledge, which is really our curriculum. And it can be thought of more of as a hierarchy. If you think of a domain right here, let's say um, business, um, you might think of a textbook that used to teach each, each course. Um, and then that book can be broken down into chapters. In this case on the screen, those are the actual topics are those chapters. And then each chapter or topic can have sub areas within them. Um, and within those areas, you can break it down far enough that you actually get to the individual concepts or elements um, that are actually being taught in the course. Um, and so what's interesting about our system or, or how we built the system around or what we did build it around was those prerequisite relationships between those elements. So how does one, how does a student build up their knowledge going from no knowledge of this course to complete knowledge? What is the mechanism so that we can take, you know, those base concepts and we can arrange them in a prerequisite manner? So starting on left, you're going to have, you know, over to the left, you have your intro to exponents. And then as students build their knowledge, they acquire knowledge going from left to right. Um, and then they can finish, the, they have different pathways. So they finish their first, and then they have different pathways that they can take. Um, and each of those pathways requires knowledge of the one before it. So you can see how students have different pathways, how they can be guided down those different pathways um, to have the highest chance of success, kind of no matter what their current ability is. Um, and then just kind of moving on here um, so we can get through this because I want to get to Evelyn's stuff. What you're going to see here um, 
it's not really meant for you to be able to read those individual um, sections there within this map, but we kind of wanted to give you a sense of what does a real map look like. Um, this is just a map that was pulled from our system. It's a sample. Um, but what's important to understand, you know, these are the different complex relationships between the granular elements um, that can be identified and built in the system. And so what you can see here is these knowledge spaces are independent of a course or program boundaries. Um, so you can build and connect the different knowledge spaces. Um, and so students receive more of a subset of this map, which we'll show you um, briefly, which include the learning objectives or learning, learning competencies um, within, you know, each one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and um, before I actually take you in, um, and I apologize, I am going through this kind of quickly. You know, we have, we have an hour and I know uh, we have a lot to get through. So apologize if I'm talking really fast. But um, before Evelyn does get in, you know, I just want to show you, you know, we do have different options in terms of content. And Certainly, she's going to share some of that with you um, today when, when we get into the system. Before I actually turn it over to her, though, what I'd like to do is just go ahead and, and take you in for a second and just show you kind of what does it look like um, as a student and what does it look like as an instructor when I actually log into the system. Um, so if I pick my student role here and I log in, um, I'm going to be welcome to my home page and I'm going to be able to see all of the courses that I'm enrolled in. So in this instance, I'm actually a business student enrolled in a business program. I can see that I have seven different courses here um, that I'm working on. Um, so as a student, I have a quick view of my courses and then I also have a quick view of, of my progress, the progress I've made and kind of how well I'm doing in those courses. Um, so you can notice right here these indicators um, based on my progress and my mastery. Um, and so kind of behind this course here, behind any of the courses, is a large map, similar to the one that I just shared with you. Um, and what's important for the student to know is, for example, in this particular section here, um, or course, I've got 79 concepts that I need to master. And so far, I've completed 15 of those. So I'm part of the way through this course in terms of completing those different concepts. So I know I still have a lot of work to do. Um, but now that I've completed those 15 items, how am I doing on those items? So if I click over here, you can see right now I'm at improving status. Um, and what we've got here are what we call mastery bands. And so this is where students are in respect to their ability. Um, so the, the realize that system actually has what we call, you know, it's a latent scale basically between a zero and 100, um, zero being no ability against the concept, 100 being complete ability against that concept. Um, so you can see kind of Right now, that student is currently at a 50% threshold um, that puts them in the improving uh, category. Um, keep in mind, these naming conventions can be completely customized um, to your course or to your institution. Um, so really, it's, it's whatever terminology is appropriate for your course. Um, so you adjust the bands, the, the number of bands, the appropriate ranges and scales. Um, so you know, I wanted to just remind you that the system is a very flexible system um, to meet the needs you know, of the faculty or the institution. Um, so that you've got a lot of flexibility. Okay, so now if I actually want to um, go into one of my courses, I can go ahead and just click on my fundamentals and management course. Um, and I'm going to see here that I've got a few different options. I can continue directly on this topic that I've been working on, or I can go in and I can view my other topics. Okay, so I can see here, you know, for this first topic, I've already completed 15 of 15. I do have the option to go back, of course, and rework that, or I can click on, you know, a new section here. Okay, so if I go ahead and click on Intro to Management, I've got to go back, I'm able to go back and practice, or I can view my learning path. Um, and so what you'll see here is a map that the actual students see. This is kind of the last level of the curriculum that's presented to the students. Um, these are the items that we ask the students to learn. So when students come in, initially these nodes would be gray or not colored in any way. Um, and then the student may have started at the beginning and would work their way through the map all along acquiring knowledge. Alternatively, um, what they may, they may have had prior knowledge and what they would have gone through, um, what we kind of talked about earlier is what we call our determined knowledge process. Um, and just due to time today, I don't have a lot of time to kind of take you through that process. But the first thing students will do is a determined knowledge of pre-assessment, which will then place them appropriately on the map. Um, and then students can either choose to accept kind of the suggestion that determined knowledge gives them or they can select their own individual pathways. Um, 
and then the system will monitor the student steps, you know, whether they were on the suggested path or a different path, and it adjusts accordingly. So the students work on the various nodes, the information or data that you provide, they provide will tell us, you know, about the items they're working on and additionally inform us about the different prerequisite knowledge um, and help us understand that better. Um, and so it's also important to note, just for visual purposes here, um, we do have um, a list view, which it's, it's actually mobile friendly, so your students can actually use it on a mobile device. Okay, so if I just quickly um, click in one of my nodes here, you can see here that I can go in um, and I can actually just click and revise this node if I want, and it's going to actually take me into my different path. Um, and you can see this, it'll guide me through this path. And I've got an intro section, a learning example, questions and summary. Um, and what I'd like to be able to show you a little bit more, but for time's sake, I'm just going to kind of click through this so you can get a sense of kind of what the student might see. Um, what they have are, and faculty have in terms of options, and, and everyone will go into more detail here, is just you've got, you know, um, video, text-based, interactive, you know, math programs, anything that can be really embedded into an HTML environment. Um, and, you know, really whatever the, the faculty are currently doing in their courses, we can most likely put into the system. Um, so it's a pretty, and that's a pretty simple process um, that we can go through. So it can be multiple choice, essay, short answer, mathematical formulas again. Um, but I'm not going to, for time's sake, kind of take you through all of this right now. Okay. Um, and so that just gives you, again, a very, very high level overview of what the students might see. Um, just very quickly, just want to take a couple minutes here to um, take you in and show you a faculty view. And I really want to turn it over to Evelyn. Um, from an instructor's perspective, you, you know, when you come in again, you'll integrate through your D2L system. Um, you'll be able to come in and see the different courses that you have. Um, very briefly, just want to take you in, if I take you in here to your fundamentals of management course, um, what's great is that it, you'll instantly see a bar graph that you can get a more detailed look um, of kind of a graphical representation of your student's progress and their ability against it. So if I scroll over, where I can see, you know, in that course, my student's knowledge state at this point is 85% and 88% progress. If I actually click on that, I'm going to get a better sense um, of kind of where the individual students are at. For example, I can see here I have seven students who have started um, out of 26. I can actually click right on my individual node and get right down to the individual students. Um, and if I want to learn more about my individual students, I can just click directly on Sarah. Um, and then I can see where she is at with each one of those different concepts. I can see how much time she's spending. Um, you know, it really gives me a, a very, very in-depth overview of where that student is at and kind of what that student's doing and where they may need help or remediation. Um, in addition to that, I'm able to see real time what my students are doing. Um, right now, there's no activity going on, so there's nothing to show you here. Um, and, and then I do also have my toolbox where I can, I can track my different interactions or interventions, um, any messaging, you know, see the different submissions and so on. Um, so there's there's obviously a lot here with the faculty that I'm not going to have time to go into today, but I wanted to at least give you a visual of what that might look like. It really is designed um, for faculty to have quick access to information. Where are my students working? Where are they spending their time? Are they spending way too much time on one section? I hadn't anticipated that, and maybe there's some revision that we need to have there. And then how effective is it? Um, where do I need to do remediation? How effective is the remediation? Um, the system is designed to be very intuitive and easy to use for faculty and really designed to help you spend time, you know, where you need to spend time appropriately with your students. Okay. With that said, um, based on what Jeff told me, I am going to turn it over to Evelyn because I think that um, the section that she's going to go through is really kind of what you guys want to see today. Um, so let me get out of here and get Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Screen should be shared now. Yep, we can see that. I will mute myself. Okay. Great. Um, so what I want to take you through um, our Realize It curriculum design tool, our, our Realize It um, offering to help you understand how courseware um, can, is represented in Realize It, 
And hopefully that will give you some insight into how all your materials um, can be repurposed and used and adapted and realized. Um, and as an example, what we decided to use was um, the OpenStack. Okay, I've just seen the message there that you can't hear me very well, so apologies for that. Is it any better now that I've brought the microphone slightly closer to myself? I can hear you great, but I don't know. If you see the uh, volume box, uh, you can turn up your microphone volume too a bit. It kind of auto-adjusts, but it'll adjust to you turning it up. Yeah. Okay, so volume here and microphone up a little bit. So is that any better now? Yes. Yes, okay, great. Um, the example that we decided to use was um, the OpenStack psychology textbook. Now I'm just going to put it up on screen here in PDF format. What we actually received from them was a HTML based format of it. So when we have digital content, that could be EPUB, XML, HTML, we've worked with Word documents um, and so on, or um, uh, um, IMS common cartridges from um, LMS courses as well. And when we have digital content, what we can do is run an import or an injection of that into Realize It. So rather than starting off with a blank slate, and actually building the course agency and realize it, which we can do as well, um, we can take pre-existing digital material and import that automatically into realize it. Now that creates a number of things for us within realize it. It creates a hierarchical or an organizational structure. Actually show actually showed you an example of one of those on the on the slide deck. Um, it creates a prerequisite network across the nodes. Um, so it identifies what the granular concepts are that are being instructed on in the digital, digital material. Um, and then it runs a semantic analysis to determine what the links or the logical connections between those are. So it builds um, a prerequisite network, which allows us then to imagine possible pathways that a learner could take through the knowledge space. Um, and then it also aligns any of the content or questions that it encounters um, in the material with the appropriate nodes. Okay, so we're going to take a look at all of that. Now, we will always, our team will always review the results of the ingestion and we'll always look at any improvements that we could make, be that by tweaking the import engine or making manual modifications to it. So what I'm going to show you today was imported or ingested into Realize It, so the OpenStack Psychology Textbook. And then our team did make some um, adjustments to that. Maybe they moved some of the material around, they maybe adjusted a question to make it more suitable for delivery and Realize It and so on. So it has been um, manipulated to make it the best possible representation of that material in our system. So if I switch over here, I'm going to take you in to have a look at that. So the first place that we're going to visit is the Realize It um, curriculum design tool. And what I'm going to show you here is the hierarchical structure that we mentioned. So we brought in the psychology textbook and Realize It was able to identify what chapters were being covered and then from there there was different sections and right down until it identified granular knowledge items that are being instructed on in the material. So here I've just expanded the area on learning. We've got classical conditioning and operand. We've also got um, some material on observational learning. Okay, um, And it's these end notes that we're interested in. That's the level at which we can give learners a lesson delivery on those, um, including content and so on. Now, the reason we break it down to the most granular possible level is so that we can track the learner's progress and attainment at a very granular level within Realize It. Um, so you saw the network that, um, or the, the learning map that Ashley was interacted, acting with a moment ago. Again, that would have been designed to be as granular as possible so we can identify, well, the learner is doing quite well on reinforcement schedules, but they seem to be struggling with the concept of primary and secondary reinforcers. Okay? So that's an important point about Realize It. And um, it also means that and any of your material that we bring into Realize It um, becomes very easily repurposed. Um, so what we've built here is a knowledge space. 
um, of the open psychology material. When you decide that you want to build a course from this, you can pick and choose specifically the concepts that you want to include in your course. So maybe you'll include these two notes here on reinforcement, but you'll exclude this note here on cognition and latent learning. So you're making sure that you're targeting your specific learning objectives for your course. I'll come back to that point in a moment. And um, for now, I just want to show you what the prerequisite network looks like. So this is our organizational structure of the nodes. If I switch over to prerequisites here, and I'm going to show you what learning looks like, we'll see that there are logical connections between the nodes prerequisites that ensure that the learner is ready and has all of the required prerequisite knowledge in order to move forward in the learning map. Um, and it also gives us an evidence network based on which we can make predictions forward or propagate evidence forward, but also apply the evidence backwards. Okay. So continuously, as the learner is working through the nodes, we're applying that evidence not just to that node itself, but also to um, the connected nodes. Now, this network evolves continuously in real life. It. And the more and more data that we gather from learners, the more accurate this network and more refined that this network becomes. So that's just the chapter on learning that I'm showing you there. But of course, there is an overall network here. I'll just give you some insight into how that looks. And that might remind you of the slide that Ashley brought up on screen. Um, but it's actually an interconnected network of all of the different chapters here. Okay. Um, now, I'm trying to display maybe a little bit too much at once. There we go. Um, I'll just go back to the learning for a moment. The one thing that I wanted to say is that this Gitter network has been reviewed by our, our, our team here, but you might decide that you want to make modifications to this network. So you could decide, well, really, there should be a prerequisite link between reinforcement and this note here, cognition and latent learning. Or perhaps you actually disagree with one of the prerequisite links. So you could remove that. Okay? So the network can be reviewed and modified. Okay? Um, I'm going to switch back to this, this hierarchical mode for a moment. Um, I want to speak about the content. Um, so I'm going to take you in to see how the content is aligned with the nodes. So again, any learning materials, examples, and um, summary pieces, and questions that we find in the source material will align them with the node. So what we're going to see here is a node on introduction to classical conditioning um, and realize it has pulled any of the open text materials relating um, to an introduction on classical conditioning in here. Okay? And what we have in our authoring tool is um, some standard HTML text editing tools that you see across the top here. Then it's been enhanced with realized specific tools. And we use those to take advantage of this content, to take advantage of the adaptivity available in Realize It. Now, you might notice that we're not just looking at plain text here. We've got a couple of extra features. And the orange boxes around some of the terms here are in indicating that these terms have actually been glossarized. So we were able to play, create a glossary from the OpenStax material. And then we've been able to um, provide explanations with these terms for the learner. So I'll be able to show you that when we take a look at a preview in a few moments. Also, wherever material is reused or referred to, we create references. So there's a couple of references here to images, which again, we'll be able to see on screen in a moment. So we've got the text here. The horizontal um, breaks that you're seeing, they're logical breaks in the material. The learner sees each piece unfold and they click on continue to see the next piece. Um, any um, references that were in the textbook or any links that were in the textbook to external materials, um, are there as well, so they're inserted as pop-ups there, or um, they'll open up in pop-up windows there. And um, oh, the other thing that I'll mention is this might be something that you want to include at a higher level, for example, in an end user license agreement, or you could include it at a very granular level, and um, the attribution to um, OpenStack. So you can provide links within that, details of the license, and so on. And um, so that, I've just included that there as a sample, just an idea around how that could be managed. What I've done here is just to give you an indication of, let's say you do have some extra materials that you want to include yourself um, to meet your um, course learning objectives or module learning objectives, then you could include those with another attribution that would indicate the source of that material. So I just wanted to, to let you know that that's possible. 
as um, you could add an extra section here to provide that extra material, and that's what I've done there in that case. And the other thing that I mentioned, I should mention, is that of course you could create new nodes in the curriculum as well. So I'll mention that again when we go back. And um, actually, we'll do that now. We'll, um, we'll do a preview now first. So actually, I'll go into full screen mode here. There we go. And just to show you a preview, so this should be similar to um, the experience of the learner that Ashley was showing you a few moments ago. There's our attribution. Of course, I could click on these links to and go to view the license. Um, we've got our glossary entries here, so the terms and the explanations for the learner. And then they click down to the material to see it unfold. So there's one of the references there being pulled up, and of course there's a tool, there's a, a toolkit here for this one as well. Okay. So they can click down to the material. We've got um, different um, types of sections of material and realize it. Ashley mentioned that as well. There can be introductory material, learning, summary, different approaches to examples, and so on. So all of that can build up into a lesson pathway for the system that it'll actually manage the learning through that. Um, so I'm going down to the kind of example material that I put in there just to indicate where you could include yours. And then we launch into some questions. Okay. Um, you might want to supplement the available questions here with your own um, test banks or questions that you've created and utilize it. So I'll show you that very briefly in a moment. Okay, so a couple more questions to answer here. I'm going to just try and get them correct. And one more. There we go. So on. Okay, um, we can take a look at another note. Let's go in here. So again, we have some sections down the side here that could be learning and examples and so on. This is the test-based material. Um, and then we have some questions as well. So those questions are reused in lots of different activities in real life. It could be um, determine knowledge. Ashley mentioned that earlier. It's the um, initial um, process that we have in real life for determining the learner's current knowledge stage. We use them in learning and practicing. Um, as well. Okay. Um, we'll take a look at this note here. Um, so we just have some introductory material there. It is an introduction. Okay. And then some questions. So we'll take a look at those. So they're not just multiple choice questions that we can avoid in real life. And um, there's two faults there. That one happens to be multiple choice. Um, and this one here then is like a drop down style question. Um, this one seems to be an example that I added in earlier. It was actually something that I wanted to create with you here. Um, so I could click on Add Question. Um, we could choose, there's a number of different types of questions and realize it. I'm going to go with Enter Answers this year. Um, it steps me down through the creation of the question. I'm going to skip over some of the areas just to show you this as quickly as possible. We'll put in the question text here. Now I do have it um, just in the in here for the purposes of copying and pasting it. So let's say this is what I wanted to ask the learner, but I want them to type in the word removed here. So we'll put an input in there instead. Now just to mention questions don't have to be created in real life, you could also import them in as well. So we support QTI format, for example, but we also have our own um, sort of format that will allow you to create real life questions very easily um, in Word documents. I'm just going to make my input nice and neat. We're going to look for a specific phrase in the learner's answer. So there's a number of different ways that we can try to compare the learner's answer with the correct answer. So I'm going to look for the phrase removed, so that would mean if they answered in removing or removed, which is marked correct as well. And we'll set that up. And there's a lot more control that I could put over the question, but I think I've got everything I need here now. And I'll just save that. And if we do a preview here, the learner can type in their answer. So I'll say something is removed and see if we get that correct. So that's right there. Okay, so just to point out that we can supplement the content and the questions. Okay. Um, so save that. And then, of course, um, you could add new nodes into your hierarchy if they were required. Okay, so as I've 
um, highlighted if there's a concept that wasn't covered that you needed, you could add in a new note here. Okay, I've just inserted that in. Give it a name and attach an authoring file to it. And you might have another source of material that you want to import in, or you might want to type up the material directly in real life. Okay, so that's that there. And the next thing that I'm going to speak about is you've seen this is a knowledge space. It's the entire textbook. It doesn't necessarily represent a course. Indeed, there might be multiple courses that you'd like to build from these available nodes and the, their associated materials. Um, so the one thing that I was going to mention here is that what you can create and realize it are learning maps. And you can select the nodes that you want to go into your learning map. So let's say, for example, I expand this area on thinking and intelligence here. Um, maybe I want to create a learning map that covers all of these topics on intelligence, but nothing else. Okay. So there are all the end nodes there. There happens to be nine of them. Okay. So I could pick each of the nine end nodes, or I could decide that I'll just choose their parents. So I'm going to click on the parents there, and one more, and I'm going to put them into what I would call an objective or a learning map and realize it. I'm going to call it intelligence. So this could be a module that you want the learners to complete. Quite often, um, the institutions that we work with align these with um, weeks. So they all have a link in their LMS or in D2L, for example, for a week of work. And then they click through to realize it. And this links to a learning map in realize it. Okay. Now, just the way that I've got things set up here, I'm going to make one little change to that before I show it to you, um, which is this option here. And I'll just click on Save at the bottom. So again, there is extra control that I could search over that. But if we take a look at that learning map now, we'll click on Show here. And so these are the notes on intelligence that would be included in that learning map for the learner to interact with. Okay. And as I said, that could be aligned with a week's worth of work or two weeks, or you could break the boundaries and just have them topic based um, as we've created here. Okay. Um, I will show you very briefly um, the learner experience of some of the material that we've been looking at here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to log in here as a student. And this will be similar to what um, Ashley was showing you. Um, here I've got OpenStack Psychology, of course that could be your own course name that the learner is interacting with. Um, we've created milestones for each of the chapters in here, or learning maps for each of the chapters. Okay, so there's a whole range of them, and they're not restricted. You can create your own learning maps as I've just demonstrated. I'm interested in going into the learning ones here. Okay. Um, at all stages, it recommends to the learner which milestone to work on. It also, within those milestones and learning maps, it recommends which next step to take. Okay, So it is recommending to me here to revise a specific topic. It's recognized a gap in my knowledge against that. I'm going to instead choose to view my learning path and decide myself what I'd like to work on. Um, so here we go. And let's say I want to work on... There we go. And let's say, for example, I want to work on cognition and latent learning. I'll click on, um, or yeah, let's go into that one. Okay, I'm going to click on learn there. And again, we see the material, a pathway through the material being built for us here, um, learning material and so on, um, examples if there are available questions, summary materials that's available. So. This is similar to the preview that we saw from the authoring tool a few moments ago. The learner can click down through the materials. Okay, we'll take a look at that figure there of oh, the same one that's inserted in here. Um, we've got our glossary entries there, so the terms and explanations. I click on continue down. So all of the material that we're viewing in this particular note happens to come from the original text, from the OpenStack Psychology text. But of course, as we've seen, you could add in some of your own materials if you wish. Okay, And we've got some questions here as well. So um, I'm going to just shortcut that question. Hopefully, that's the correct answer it is. Um, and a couple more of those there. Okay. So um, as the system is delivering learning materials to the learner, it attempts to assess the learner on that, to um, gauge the learner's progress or mastery of it. 
and we've got some summary material there to work through as well. So I've done quite well with that by answering all of the questions correctly. Just recording this and updating the network, propagating evidence forwards and backwards. And there we go. And there's probably some changes to my map here as well. Okay, I would expect that to be dark green, so I'm not sure what's happened there, but gee, you're learning fast. Okay. I'll have to look into that myself. Um, but I would expect the, the map to have changed there, um, highlighting that node as mass green and dark green. Um, so that takes me to the end of what I wanted to cover. And um, hopefully, it's been a full loop through what we have underpinning any course, which is a knowledge space and the content associated with this. In this case, the source of all of that was um, some of your material that was imported into Realize It. That can be supplemented with other materials, or indeed, courses can be built from scratch. Um, and then from that knowledge space, you can build the actual courses for the students, the modules or the um, learning maps or the milestones that you want them to work through. And they're all subsets of the overall knowledge space that we're working against. Um, so I think that we want to leave the last few minutes for any questions that you might have. Um, so it would be, I guess, good to take those next. Yes, uh, feel free to type them into chat if you would like, but um, be sure to change your send to to all panels. I've heard that attendees cannot select all participants, and I'm going to look into that later on. Okay, so I'm not seeing too many questions at the moment, um, but I would like to encourage you to send any questions that may come up later. Uh, always send those to me at jeff.gallant at usg.edu, and I just have a chat in case you do not have it. Um, I can always direct it to um, Ashley or Evan or whoever. Yeah, you can. Um, this is Ashley. Yeah, I was going to type my email here too, so you guys have it. Um, and you can always address them to me, and if they're more um, appropriate for Evelyn, I can forward them on to her. So, um, but mine is just Ashley O'Connor, Ashley Dad O'Connor at realizeitlearning.com. Okay. Yep, and I just great. Uh, so thank you all for coming today. Um, be sure to fill out our form, which I had copied, and then I uh, immediately had something else to copy. So I'm going to run back into here and go to the web survey and get that link uh, that's actually clickable as opposed to what we've got right now. And here we go. Sorry, I'm just walking through why I'm not doing it. There we go. <laughs> So there's our group. It lets us know how we're doing uh, with these webinars and what you might like to see in the future. Uh, so please fill that out, and it will help us as we move forward. Great. So thank you so much, uh, Evelyn and Ashley, for the presentation. And thank you all for attending today. And have a wonderful, wonderful day. Great. Thank you, Jeff. You guys all have a great day. Thank you. Take care.